starting. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good Saturday morning. Um, I'm so glad to have folks in the room and especially our um, our featured guest, uh, Byers Davis and Joan Clayton Davis. Not only are friends are mine, but they're friends of ours now because they love gardening and farming as much as we do. They are master gardeners since 2014 and date from Davidson, Davidson County. Tennessee, and that's region seven. And as you know, we're, see, we're uh, not season, zone seven, mm -hmm. and we're zone seven B. Some of us might be in seven A, I'm not sure, because I think we're that's- We're seven A. Okay, yeah. you're seven A, okay. We're seven B. What'd you say, Carly? I think I'm seven A. Okay, you're seven, I'm seven B. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think. Okay, so anyway, um, but um, Byers and Joan, they volunteer to educate the public on gardening, horticulture, um, and, um, and with a focus on vegetable gardening. I've also seen some beautiful flowers um, that Joan has posted and shared with me um, via text or email. And they both are avid gardeners. And I would love, okay, I'm just admitting someone else in the room. Hey guys, this is real casual. This is no fancy dancy stuff here. Um, and um, so what I'd like to do is to first, Joan shared this picture with me and I thought it was such a great way for us to introduce, hey, Anne, I can see your, your beautiful face. Um, and after Joan tells us a story about this, she'll, she'll wanna know more about us, about you know, what kind of gardening you know, do we normally do? What do we want to do more of? Um, and what is our focus? As I mentioned, they focus on uh, on gardening, horticulture, but a focus on vegetable gardening. But she'll want to know from us, what do we want to focus on? So um, that's as much introduction as I think that any time will allow because Joan and Byers will take it from here. Thank you. Okay, um, this photo, uh, was part of an article about community gardens that was uh, done in a Nashville, Tennessee newspaper. Uh, and it was focusing on the community garden where Biaser and I participate at the research farm at the College of Agriculture at Tennessee State University, which is in the, in the middle of the city. And um, we had, um, the garden has 40, about 40 to 60 plots that are um, each gardening um, group or individual will have. And um, this was in the garden. And um, they came and took this photo and this is how we look when we garden. <laughs> so I said, this is almost like American Gothic, the painting, <laughs> American Gothic. All we need is the pitchfork. <laughs> and, um, but uh, this is just the way we are. And um, since I retired, this is what I do. Uh, 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 one of the volunteer things I spend uh, a significant amount of time on. Um, and, and especially with a, a partnership with Nashville Public Libraries that has a seed exchange program. And we go in and teach people on all kinds of topics like, um, seed starting, seed saving, uh, using the color wheel to enhance your, your landscape um, or your garden. Uh, uh, we're doing one this afternoon with one of the libraries on uh, one of my fellow master gardeners on enjoying and uh, growing in, a beginner's guide to growing and enjoying herbs. So um, it's always fun and uh, that's how we, buyers and I do this together. And we, uh, our garden, community garden was blown away with the tornado that hit Nashville last year. So no. we didn't have the community garden, but we changed and I used my sister's backyard um, to develop raised beds. So we had four, eight by, uh, four by eight and, and four by 10 raised beds and had a really successful year. So that's basically us, that, but that's where that photo comes from. And we just love it because it's like, that's us. The only thing is that one shows that we are mighty clean. 
<laughs> you know, you have more dirt on yourself. <laughs> well, that's, that was my thought when you said that that's what you guys look like when you're guarding. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I normally look like I fell out of a, I don't know, a sugar beet truck or something. Yeah. Well, you see on my arm, that my uh, right arm there is some sleeves because I'm allergic to everything. Oh. And it's some protective equipment. It's just from my wrist to my shoulder. But mm -hmm. uh, the raised beds that we did uh, last season, up until this up until this week, we were still getting greens, harvesting greens from it and from the ones we had on our back porch. But the uh, snow and the ice, it may have killed everything. That's right, because you all, yeah, you all got hit with uh, some unusual yeah. weather. We got about six inches of ice on a porch. And you can't open the front door because it's, there's about a foot of a ice that of came, ice. came off the roof. And you, know, you can't open the door. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I really thank you all for giving us like a perspective of what's happening in Tennessee. They're in Nashville. I know I mentioned Davidson County, but they're specifically, you know, in the area of Nashville. You know, and you hear about, you know, the ice storm that's hitting, you know, that part of the country. But it's interesting just to have you online and to see the impact and also the concern that, you know, some of their, um, you know, your um, uh, the perennials or whatever, you know, that are were probably trying to make their way up into the world. You know, we don't know how much damage um, this, that's the, right. you know, the cold and ice has, um, has yeah. done. So so I'm going to I'm going to stop sharing so that you can. But uh, jump. Uh, Joan asked me to learn from you all. What kind of guardian? We'd love you for you to quickly introduce yourself. She wanted, to, she wants, Byers and Joan wants this to be really interactive. So I'm going to stop the screen share. Um, and, um, and so you can introduce yourself. I see so many wonderful faces. Uh, <laughs> and I'm so glad to see Anne. <laughs> I know. I, and, and Joan, do you see Rajni? There's Rajni. Oh, there she is. Okay. <laughs> And like then, 20 years older since she last saw me, probably. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, and, and I'm admitting someone else into the room, uh, Claudia. And this so is, uh, this is my friend Claudia. She is um, a new gardener, and she was so I I sent her the link this morning. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Claudia. <laughs> Hi. Hi, uh, Claudia. You joined us right on time. Uh, we're about to go in the row. I know who I'm looking at first, but I don't know who wants to go first. Who entered the room first? And I don't know. Let's just introduce yourself and talk about just what kind of gardening you plan to focus on that you really enjoy. And I'll stop there. Well, I'll jump in just to say hi to Joan. <laughs> Wonderful to see you. Um, Joan and Janine and Rajni and I all worked together some years back. And um, I'm glad to be part of this group. I'll confess <clears throat> I am a wannabe gardener. So my whole life, I always kind of thought that I would be a gardener. But the truth is, I don't really like to get out of the garden very often. Our son came home uh, last year because of the pandemic. And he really dug in, literally, to doing some gardening around our backyard. So I wanted us to get an earlier start this year. And I'm really going to give it one more shot, Joan. Thank you. Good. And buyers, I have... I don't believe ever met you, but I've no. known mm. of you for decades, <laughs> and it's wonderful to see you. Mm, nice to meet you. Nice meeting everybody. So who wants to go next? I don't want to call names. Just you. Just I'll go. Um, hi, Joan. I'm so happy to be here. I'm. I'm. I've been texting Janine. Uh, is you sending a Zoom link? Is she still doing it? <laughs> I would like to become the queen of the container garden. So I am- uh, I think, if you want Well, we'll do one on container gardening. Good, because I'll give you a little glimpse of my dining room table here. So, and I've been able to kind of have some collards there and some um, little bit of, I like to do more lettuce. I have some herbs, but I'm not that good. I really learned some tips from my dad and from Janine. And so I was able to, I was one of those people that, uh, didn't seem to blossom. My stuff didn't grow and everybody else's did, but it was almost like God was telling me just wait because I do stuff in and out of season. And so come November when it shouldn't have grown, I grew the biggest bell peppers. They just <laughs> came after like six months. I mean, it was crazy. So I was one of those ones that wanted to quit, but what I didn't do was quit. I just 
would replant and keep doing it and keep at it. And then stuff started coming. So um, I was thinking, and container gardening might work for you because I do it just around the house. I got a collard plant right in my kitchen on the floor in a big pot that keeps coming back. Um, so my biggest thing uh, that I would like to get is the seedling thing is a struggle for me. So Janine gave me these trays, but I the lighting is always wrong or something happens where it's not near a window and it keeps getting leggy. So I have problem with leggy uh, stuff happening leggy. And I would love to start with the seedlings because it, you know, it's exciting to see that stuff start and then be able to transplant. But there's something happening with that seedling and I end up just putting them in cups. Janine's taught me the red solo cup and that works and some jars. And so that's kind of what I would love. Yeah, Tara, I'm, I'm all about containers. I can manage those better than the earth somehow. Exactly, because I don't have a, yeah, I don't have the big yard. So I have a patio that was just a, a full, Janine saw pictures, full-fledged garden. I had lots of stuff out there. Some my came through. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, big buyers. My, my daughter does that on her porch. It's smaller than my uh, dining room table. But for the legginess that happens on your uh, seedlings, bring your light. If you're using Lower. a grow light, bring the light lower to it. Keep it within okay. about three to four inches when it's first starting to uh, germinate. And sure. as they get a little bit bigger, you know, and they start to touch the light, then raise the light so that you don't burn them. Got it. That's I a good tip. I, Just that I wish I had uh, photos of the stuff we showed Janine of uh, an arrow garden where I'm starting. I do my seed starting uh -huh. and uh, we're going to well, buyer, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I would love to have a, a Saturday session on arrow gardening and just so you can show, you know, that's what I want to do because I had is... tons of questions. So, yeah. OK, okay. Uh, who wants who else? Sorry. Thank, you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Oh, yeah, I put a. Uh, I put up that link for that Zoom training, and I also put a little information for you for something you might want to get a hold to for Johnny Seed. Uh, okay. Yeah. One, this mag is this is just basically an advertisement where you can buy seeds and stuff like that. But what I like about this, it gives you a germination guide oh, for good. all of uh, whatever they have in there whatever plant, beans, asparagus, cantaloupes, cucumbers. It'll give you a germination guide. It'll also give you a uh, different growing tips. Okay. And it give you uh, disease codes for it. And, and it's, it's, it's really helpful. And it gives Perfect. you a time when to harvest, all of that. And it's called Perfect. Johnny Seeds. A lot of the other companies out there, Park Seed, Gurney's, they won't, uh, they don't have that information in their uh, catalogs. So okay. we're going to try to finish our introductions. And okay. Okay. And um, so we have Carly Rajni. I see someone else joined. Is that you, Karen? Who said who jo someone else joined? It says Galaxy Eight, but I don't have a name. And you're connecting to audio so that you know. The last person who just joined. So Carly, Rajni, and we have two other people, maybe three other people that joined. So Carly, just introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, I'm Carly. Hi. Nice to meet you all um, and see everyone else again. Uh, so I um, have been trying to grow vegetables for a couple of years now. I have a community garden plot now. Um, I got it last summer and spent the entire season just really trying to get the weeds under control. So I haven't actually grown anything in it. I recruited another friend to split the plot with me because there's no way I can do this on my own. Like you, there was a woman I was talking to next in the plot next to me and she's like, you have to be here every day in the summertime or else the weeds will just take over. So uh, my friend Samantha and I are um, going to split uh, the plot and hopefully some of the work of just kind of keeping the weeds under control. And, um, I guess last year was probably the first time that I really got really dug in and started buying things and growing things well. So I have, um, I grow things in containers and I have um, block, uh, beds, uh, like raised beds on my deck, <clears throat> but um, really tall trees around my house. And so there really is only sun mm -hmm. that hits my deck for three months. 
Um, and so that's why I really wanted to get a garden plot. And so next week, uh, I, so I've been going by the schedule that the Virginia Cooperative Extension mm -hmm. sent out of when to plant. And I had this whole schedule, <laughs> poor Claudia, I haven't even told you this, Claudia. I sent her this, the, what I had written out for myself. I had gone through the whole schedule, like, okay, I'm gonna plant, so I'm gonna plant some radishes in a couple of days. Um, and, uh, but then just everything else. And I went through it, then I was looking at the schedule. Like, oh, okay. And uh, I realized that the first time I was looking at the right zone and the second time I was looking at the wrong zone. Okay. So it was right the first time. Okay. Um, so basically I'm gonna start, I'm gonna direct those some radishes next week and some peas. No, no, the peas, no, no, yes. Sorry. I, I'm a mess. This is a, this is why I'm on a webinar. So I'm going to direct so some peas and some radishes next week, and then um, and I'm going to start my seeds for tomatoes and peppers. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to look at my calendar, but in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. I, I have other I have other plans, but we're not going to go through them all. <laughs> Start your, uh, for your peppers and your tomatoes, start them now. Start them now, okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and buyers, uh, would you suggest a heating pad for peppers? I used a heating pad last year and it worked well for me. I'm sorry, you're muted. Oh. Oh, buyers is. Yeah, you're muted. It, it depends on uh, the temperature where, you're, where you've got them at, if they're in a basement that's a little bit cooler than the heating pad. But if it's like, uh, if you're using like I do upstairs, you, you don't need it, you know. Okay. Thank you. Can, let me ask you a quick question. If I have grow lights, can I start the seeds like in a bright room? Do I need grow lights if there's a bright room or should I still have grow lights if it's a bright room or? It, it sometimes it matters, but what happens if you have them and there's, they're not, close to a window or something they're going to tend to go towards the light source okay. and you know that means they're going to be bending yeah. Yeah. instead yeah instead of going straight up okay awesome thank you we're going to have i'm going to have q a at the end as well mm -hmm. um and rajani um if, and, and i i know i don't i want joan to have plenty of time it's about 10 20 her presentation is about 20 minutes, right, Joan? Mm -hmm. About 15, 20. So, uh, Rajani, and then we have, a, I just want to hear the voices of everyone. So, please. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> My name is Rajani. Um, I've got a lot of different things going on with gardening. It started a few years ago when I, we have a house that we live in now. So, we had space. We actually had somebody who's a professional farmer come out and take a look. She, did our soil and told us like one corner where we actually could grow things. And then of course she told us how expensive it was gonna be for her to do everything. And we're like, well, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's not gonna happen. Um, so I actually, through a place I used to work, I got a, um, through our silent auction at around winter time, I hired uh, one of my coworkers to basically come over. <laughs> he donated his time basically, right? To go do a a charity and so he came and he had again a farmer since he was a little kid um and so he did a double dig he set up two beds plus a what we were calling my little nursery to get this you know the little baby seedlings and, and sprouts and all those things to then transplant them um so i don't know that we've done a, a amazing job in like upkeep i know it gets more complicated with rotating crops and the soil and you know all kinds of things, but um, we we kind of just play with it and have fun. So we've got, I don't know, each year I try something new. I've got an artichoke plant that has actually given mm -hmm. artichokes, which is pretty cool. It's like one of the coolest plants. The okra we've had one year was amazing. Um, I don't, we just always try something new. We've done tomatoes, we've done peppers. Um, I did tomatillo one year and that plant was out of control. So uh, it's kind of hit or miss. I'd say my biggest like complain is usually my yields. <laughs> I don't ever get it. Like I actually do love going out in the garden. I, love, I don't even mind the weeding um, until it gets to like peak summer and then it's just so hot outside. That becomes a problem. So those are my two things, the, 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 the yield. And then once we get to a point in summer, which kind of, those kind of go hand in hand, honestly, like they just 
really take off and then something just happens. I think watering might be part of our issue. Um, I've also got uh, uh, some fruit stuff going around the yard now. I've got a pear tree, peach tree, that's got all kinds of issues. So that's, I've learned, I'm learning that those are really difficult to keep pest free and disease free. Um, pear tree is doing well though. Um, and a grapevine as well that we put in. So again, a lot of this stuff takes off really well in the early spring, early summer, and then it just doesn't okay. <laughs> give us what we want it to give us. So, um, and I have one quick question. I used a question at the end, but somebody's gonna have to tell me, I, I work with some schools and I got these seeds just randomly, they were giving them out. So I got this little cup. I can't tell what it is. <laughs> Okay. Okay. We'll look at that at yeah. near the end because I, I, and it'd be great to go even to go around to have Joan and buyers take a look for it because it depends on what we focused on, right? In our gardening, maybe we'll spot those uh, leaves right away, which I hope. And I see I see two other people, and I love to hear from you, Claudia. And I know that here, and I can't wait. So, Hi, everyone. My name is Claudia, and Carly's friend, and I'm a enthusiastic gardener. <laughs> which means that some years I plan, some years I succeed, some years I don't, but I always enjoy being outside and I love the outdoors, so whatever. <laughs> Last year I had tomatoes and basil and red peppers and we were successful with those. Cucumbers, oh yeah, we had also before cucumbers and uh, what else? Um, I think that was all. That was all? No, we also have zucchini. We have zucchini and that worked well. And we have, we tried with carrots and we never, we've never been successful with carrots. Yeah, because they never grew. Yeah, they never grew. Mm -hmm. And actually last year was the first time that we had tomatoes that we could eat. Right, Myra? Yeah, we had some tomatoes. We have some tomatoes, not a lot, but some mm -hmm. tomatoes. So yeah, here we are. And <laughs> we only have one bell pepper. One bell pepper. Yeah. Yes, so we appreciate your your expertise and your time, and I'm very grateful to be here. Um, and we're grateful to have you. And, and Myra, not Myra, not, 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 not in Nida. Yes. Hi, yes. And, and you can say hello to everyone here. We're glad to hear yeah. you. And you <laughs> are you are a gardener, and yes. it's great to hear from you. Thank you. Oh, she is. She's my she's my motor. She's the one that's taking me out. We I have. We have everything. We bought all the, the seed leaves and we have, we're ready to go. <laughs> that is wonderful. I know Tara uh, also gardens with her daughter, her, her granddaughter as well. So and we'll maybe, I don't know if we have time, but please, um, Karen, please introduce yourself. And Hi, I'm Karen Grimes and I met Janine about a year and a half ago and we were kindred garden spirits. So I'm really happy to see her face and to finally be on this call. I am at work, so I may have to go, but um, I love to garden. I've grown a little bit of everything, lettuce. Um, I have some collards that are growing right now. I planted some garlic for the first time this year, some onions. Um, I did have a garden plot when I lived in North Carolina. Um, right now, I just have a raised bed garden, and I also love some flowers. I do seeds. You know, I'm kind of the, the garden beggar in my neighborhood. If I see something I like, I'll ask for seeds or a cutting, and um, it's therapy for me. It really is. It, it just, it, it nourishes my soul, and we all know how good it is to eat. So my grandmother garden, my mother garden, and so it's, and now I call my daughter my garden girl. She's 23 and she's not quite as helpful as she used to be, but <laughs> I'm just happy to be here and happy to learn from everybody. Great. Karen, we're glad to have you here. Okay. And, uh, and at the end, I'll invite whoever is not a member of, um, of our small group, but fun group. And I'm, I'm hoping this year really to push us forward and have more sessions like this. So I'm going to stop. We've all What's introduced and I'm going to turn this over to Joan, and we'll ask everyone to, including myself, to mute my, uh, to mute yourself, so that um, she can present. She's going to share her screen, and um, we'll get going. And Joan, don't forget to unmute yourself when you speak. Janine, what did your T-shirt say? It says, "It says garden, garden life," and it has like tools and things on it. I want that. <laughs> okay, I'll see if I can find one for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm muting myself.
Joan, you're on mute. Yeah, Joan, you're on mute. And as there Can you, you hear me now? Yes. OK, good. Well, we're going to just go through the slides and uh, have a chance to um, share at the end. And I have about uh, 20, 25 slides. I don't think it's 25. I think it's 22. But um, at our Master Gardener group, we really spend time trying to share as much as we can with uh, people in the community, all kinds of groups, um, and individuals as well, just to make sure that uh, they get the best out of their gardening experience and they enhance their gardening uh, knowledge and use science-based approaches to gardening. Well, for some reason, we're not moving. Sometimes it's slow, Joan, so just- oh, here we go. Minute. Yeah. There are some things you want to uh, think about when you're starting uh, to, to uh, uh, see, when you're starting seeds and, and these five points really get at the, the center of everything you need to do. First, you want to be sure to start with high quality seeds. And if you have a, we're going to, the next slide talks about uh, just looking at your seed package when you buy them. And um, old seeds may or may not germinate. And uh, I tried some of those this summer that I'd had for about five or six years and half of them germinated and half of them didn't. And then some seeds are treated with an insecticide or a fungicide and you can recognize them by the pink color. If you buy seeds at like a farmer's co-op, a lot of their seeds are um, treated, but they do well, they, 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 they do well. And uh, if you are, uh, completely organic. Uh, some people don't necessarily like to use those that have been treated, but uh, they are usually very good seeds and quality seeds. And then some seeds may be stored for quite a while, uh, up to several years if they are kept in the right conditions. And then you wanna plant them at the proper time and the proper spacing. And um, one of the things I always suggest is use the chart that your extension service and your local um, uh, land grants um, university extension program has. So they have them for every county, every state. And uh, this is an example of, uh, if you have one, you can look at the, the one, if you have one near you, uh, just your seed packets. Um, It'll show you the planting time, how deep to plant them, how far apart to plant them, how many days before harvest from the time you plant, and then whether they are disease resistance. And one of the things you want to do is look to see if you can find uh, seeds that are disease resistant, because that can save you a lot of heartache. And the year the seed was intended to be planted, and this one is an old one, and I think at the bottom, it has, it was 2014. And uh, so you wanna look at that. And then it has, a. if you notice, it has a calendar of when to plant. And um, just look at, you, at the one I have is a tomato. I have a beefsteak tomato uh, packet of seeds. And it tells, it has a, a photograph of the little plant, what it should look like. And, um, and all the information that you see here. And then how to store them. It's really important that you store them properly such that they are viable. Um, just the ideal temperatures are between 40 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit uh, with the desirable um, seed moisture for most crops is around 10 to 12% moisture. And uh, one of the more practical methods uh, for storing small quantities like those where you save seeds yourself is to place the leftovers in a sealable uh, jar. And I've even used little jars where I have a, a, a jelly jar. I, once the, all the jelly is gone, I wash them uh, heavy with soap and water. I also will do them with uh, just a little bit of Clorox in them and then wash them with soap and water again. And then I put them in the dishwasher and so that they're really clean and, and have 
as few pathogens as possible, hopefully none in them. And then uh, you want it to be an airtight container regardless. And you uh, store your seeds in a cool, dark area, such as your refrigerator and not the freezer, as I said, with my scotch bonnet, that is not where it should be, so. But here are some examples. Just looking down here, you have these little uh, uh, seed jars, and then you have like Ziploc, and, uh, and then you can have like a, a plastic container, like a, a shoe box, um, one of those plastic boxes you put shoes in. And then uh, once you store them, uh, this is a, an example of how long they will last. Um, the relative life expectancy, uh, if you have favorable storage conditions, is uh, for onions, parsley and parsnip, it's like a year, peppers, two years, and corn, if you have space to grow corn, uh, two to three years, those seeds will last two to three years. Uh, spinach, beets, carrots, and chard, two to three years, and all your beans, two to four years, so they'll last a long time. Tomato seeds last a long time, up to four years. Lettuce, endive, those, these will have uh, four or five years, and all of your melons, the cucurbits, uh, four to five years. And then all of those in the, the uh, uh, cabbage family, like broccoli, cauliflower. Uh, went the wrong way. Uh, they have four or five years. And then the other thing to think about is um, when to plant. The Look at the guides that your extension service give you and you've got cool season vegetables and warm season vegetables. And the cool season vegetables are the things that you usually can start planting in, in March or early April. And the warm season vegetables are usually uh, in May, first, first part of May. And uh, more specifically for the cool season uh, planted vegetables, particularly, uh, you plant the very cold hardy vegetables four to six weeks before the last frost. And your uh, extension guide will tell you when it is. Like in, in, in Nashville, Tennessee, it's uh, tax day, April 15th. So anything that I wanted to plant, if it's a, a very hardy uh, vegetable, uh, like um, mustard greens or collard greens, uh, they're really uh, cold hardy. So I could plant them four to six weeks before the um, 15th of April, which means the first week of, of March, I could plant them. And then plant moderately cold hardy vegetables about two weeks before your last frost. So that would be like the first of April for me. And then, and, and always refer back to your chart. And then for the warm season vegetables, and this is when, when most people plant their gardens in the warm season. And that's what will last from, um, the first of May you start and then you start harvesting at the end of May and it will go through um, the end of July and depending on how hot it is and what you planted. So you warm season vegetables, uh, you plant after the soil has warmed. And one of the things that lots of people plant their tomatoes too early because tomatoes need to be planted when the, the, the um, soil is warm and Certain um, beans like uh, Crowder peas, uh, purple hull peas, black eyed peas, they need warm soil and they don't germinate well because you can, you can uh, direct seed them, put them directly in the ground. So, uh, and this is the first of May for the most part for the warm season vegetables. One of the things that uh, you need to know about the warm season vegetables, the soil needs to be around 75 degrees uh, for yeah. them to germinate. If, if it, the soil is cooler than that, they probably won't germinate. And if it's too cool or too wet, the seeds will just rot in the ground the way they are. Yeah, and what we'll do, uh, we will have this PowerPoint that we can make available and Janine can send it out to everybody. Um, uh, just to give you an example of some of the things, uh, the first four to six weeks before um, frost date, these are the things you can plant almost in the next couple of weeks. Um, lettuce, mustard, 
kale. And one of the things in some areas you can plant in a fall garden, these same very cold hardy things can be in your fall garden. And the moderate uh, cold hardy, you just kind of count backwards. And well, these you do two weeks before, like if you have turnips or like, and then I always say where they, for people who like turnips, you have the turnip greens, beets, uh, Swiss chard, broccoli, cauliflower, and then Irish potatoes. By the end of March, you could plant your Irish potatoes. And always remember that all of these leafy, uh, those that are in, in the cabbage family or leafy greens, beets are wonderful as, uh, even though it grows underground and turnips, they grow underground, but the, the greens can be eaten just like uh, mustard and, and other greens. And here, like for the cool season, some of the others that you do, just to know the difference between what you can go from seed. So if you're starting seeds, uh, things you can go from seeds or, or direct into the ground and uh, or from transplants. Broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, and onions do better with transplants. So if you're gonna grow bro broccoli or cabbage uh, from seed, um, you want to grow them such that they'll be ready for um, transplant at the appropriate time. And then some of those from seed uh, is this list here that we talked about earlier. And here is, uh, Plants are shallow rooted, the ones that are cool season, they don't have deep roots. And if uh, they're planted at the wrong time, they can, broccoli can bolt. We grow broccoli most every year, but if it, the weather gets too hot, they will bloom. And that's called bolting because the broccoli flowerets are just really flowers, so. And the plants are frost hardy or tolerant. They can withstand cool weather and most are leafy and require nitrogen and the seeds germinate and the plants mature in cool soil or cool air temperature and then they will bolt or die or lose quality in when it gets hot and they they as i mentioned earlier they've uh, said to bolt when their their growth goes rapidly from being mostly leaf leaf based to being mostly flowers and, and this is what it looks like. But you can still, if it bolts, your broccoli bolts, you can still cut the little flowerets and eat them. And then you can cut the greens and eat them. They taste just like collards. And then the warm season uh, vegetables uh, mostly produce edible fruits rather than vegetable leaves. So we look at these and the melons, pumpkins, cantaloupe, and for anyone who has space for a cantaloupe type um, um, cucurbit, uh, there is a papaya do melon that is one of the best tasting uh, cantaloupe type melons. So if you haven't tried it, uh, and it doesn't actually take as long as a cantaloupe, it's a, probably a couple of weeks shorter from the time you plant it. And you can plant this from seed, um, but it's a wonderful, tasting uh, melon. And uh, sweet potatoes is warm season. This year I tried sweet potatoes growing them in burlap bags, thinking of container gardens. So, but all of these, the field peas, as I mentioned, like Crowder peas and black eyed peas, uh, purple hull, uh, these are all warm season. If the ground needs to be, the soil needs to be warmer. And okra, I heard someone said they tried okra. Uh, just as a, a, a trivia, during the uh, Civil War, when they couldn't import coffee, uh, many of the Southern farmers grew okra and uh, they dried the okra, let it grow to seed, a little hard pods and take the seeds out. You can put them in the oven and roast them and make coffee and it's, as a coffee substitute. And it's it tastes kind of like a combination between coffee and hot chocolate. I tried it a couple of years ago. So uh, the warm season vegetables are fairly deep rooted because if you look at your uh, 
tomatoes or peppers or eggplant, their roots go down pretty deeply. And they're fairly heat tolerant, but they're not cold tolerant. So I, have, I have a photo of my uh, raised beds when uh, the tomatoes got the first light frost. It's, it's a sad sight. So, but we're going to keep going. Well, um, they'll not germ germinate or grow in cold soil. And I think that's something Byer said just a little. Oh, oh yeah. Byer held up one of my uh, cans of pickled okra. okra. We also won first place at the state fair several years ago for her pickled okra. The other thing about um, okra and tomato plants, my okra plants get to be about eight feet tall. My tomato plants get between five and six feet high and some of the peppers too. And then here are just some examples of what you can go from seed or what you can go from transplants, uh, like the beans, as we said, the field peas, uh, squash and melons. Anytime you're trying to grow uh, melons in warm season, they just, unless you have a lot of room, uh, you, but cucumbers, you can put them in a pot or a container and stake them and then run it up the, the stake. Um, uh, transplant, eggplant does really good. We had, we do eggplant for a friend every year and uh, it does really well, um, but they take up a little space. And then uh, just for germination, uh, they should be started in sterile soilless mix that moistens easily and stays fluffy. You want your um, medium that you put your seeds in to be really fluffy. Uh, this, they germinate best when it's 70 to 80 degrees temperature. And a heat mat will steep, uh, speed up your germination and it gives them a constant temperature. And uh, you want to keep your soilless mix constantly moist, not too moist, not too dry, but constantly moist. And then direct sun sunlight is not essential for germination, but once the seedling emerges, light becomes uh, really important. And then your uh, fluorescent tube, fluorescent tube lights, um, they'll work well uh, for your started plants. And then you uh, keep the lights directly over the seed seedlings once they come up for 10 to 12 hours. And here are just some examples. Just looking at the containers for seed starting. Uh, you've got the, the soil mixes. They have the super potting mix. That's kind of a generic title. And then you have meat, uh, peat, like peat moss, the, the peat cubes, uh, peat pots. And then the, you have the, the Jiffy 7 uh, pellets. And, and then you can use uh, milk cartons. You can cut those up and, and prepare them. And uh, then you use the flats. You can use all of these. And then you can, you can actually buy seed starting kits. So all of them work. You can, you, also, you can also use egg cartons and those egg trays that you buy when you, um, uh, for your groceries. When you get eggs, just cut the top half off put the uh, soil in the bottom, put your seeds in it, and you're ready to go. Yeah. And seed starter trays are a good way to, to, to promote your propagation and control the environment in where you're, when your seeds are sprouting. And here are just some examples. And you can do a look at the paper cups. Um, and I've got something I'm going to um, uh, when we finish this, I'm going to show you that I have in my kitchen window uh, that uh, is a really good way to start um, seeds. Uh, but these are all different ways. So you see the eggshells and the brown eggs and just different things. You can use um, all kinds of things just to make it work. And then there are different kinds of mixtures and wherever you go to buy your mix, uh, just uh, hear some that uh, they recommend that are, are good for starting your seeds, uh, like pro mix and, and plant them in small cell trays that like we saw earlier, or these that are shown here. And uh, with or uh, without your lights, and after they've germinated, 
they can be transported into cell packs that are a little bigger to give the roots a little more space. And uh, you want in watering, which is really important, uh, water is necessary for them to generate, uh, germinate, and, uh, but you don't want to stress them. Water stress will severely impact their growth, how large they get and how established they become as plants. And you don't want them to be too dry because uh, drought stress uh, is a reason, a, a very common reason for poor germination. It's just been too dry and not enough moisture for them to germinate. Excess water promotes the occurrence of dampening off. So if you've got this, this uh, looking here, dampening off, that's, and you've seen, we've all seen this happen, uh, but it's uh, because of drought stress. And then heat mats, if you're using heat mats, um, the temperature uh, 60 for cool season plants, 80 degrees for warm season plants, and an average of about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And the heat mats placed uh, below the flats can help you maintain your, your optimal temperature during the germination period. And if you see in this, um, this slide, uh, how that heat uh, generates up to it and will help them germinate. And then humidity is important too. So high humidity is not necessary for most seeds to germinate, but it is important to reduce the amount of evaporation uh, uh, because that can reduce the potential for water stress. And plastic coverings uh, can help maintain your uh, moisture conditions uh, while they're germinating. And some greenhouses use plastic tents with heat mats and uh, lamps or small germination chambers. And some people even use, they cut off uh, uh, jugs like uh, milk jugs and that kind of thing where they can, uh, you'll have it and you can just cut it and cover your, your seedlings. And then the light, uh, this is uh, something to always remember. Uh, just think ROY, R-O-Y, and then G-B-I-V. And that's about the different colors of light and how they impact um, germination and the growth of plants. The red and blue have most impact on your plant growth. The greens, uh, the green is least affected. It ref the reflection of green light gives green color, color to plants, but it is the least affected. Uh, as you're germinating and getting started. The blue uh, supports vegetative growth. The red, when combined with blue, encourages flowering. So you want to just keep that in mind. And like for our indoor lighting, uh, fluorescent lamps, uh, a lot of folks use these, are most commonly used in our home environments to, to provide light to our plants. And the grow lamps, have a mixture of red and blue colors already built into them. And Janine, I think you have grow lamps. So uh, incandescent lamps are high in red and red orange, but generally they produce too much heat for use in supplementing plant growth. So you don't want them to get too close to those incandescent lights. And once you uh, the plants germinate, those first two little leaves come up, uh, light levels must be high enough to prevent stretching. And we've all seen that, the little plants, it's all like they came up, but all they have is legs, you know, this. And he, yeah. here's, because um, these first two leaves that pop out of the, out of the, the medium, uh, growing medium, um, just look at this, and then your true leaves come, and that looks like a tomato plant. It is. And um, so the, uh, the seed leaf, um, which are those two larger ones, um, come before the true leaves, which are the two, the true leaves, which will kind of look like your plant later. And then hardening off is really, really important. If you want to have success, once you seeds uh, uh, germinate and grow and are ready to put out in containers or in your raised beds or your um, uh community garden in the ground, uh, 
anytime you're growing anything, you should harden your plants slowly by letting them get acclimated to their new environment. It's kind of like we have, um, uh, it's cold outside in Nashville. If I want to go outside, I need to put on some warm clothes and I need to know it's cold. So I can't go sleeveless outside. So this is kind of the same concept. Um, beginning about a week before you want to transplant your new seedlings, uh, you harden them by withholding water. Don't water them quite as much. And then allow them to wilt a little bit where they look sad. You said, oh God, I need to, but let them wilt a little bit uh, between your light waterings. Just water them a little uh, lighter than before. And do not hard harden them by withholding fertilizer. You can continue your fertilizer, but just you uh, cut back on your watering. And then for cool temperatures, uh, where it's 60 or 65 in the day and 60 or 60 at night, uh, for a week or more uh, causes cat phasing. So I don't know if any of you have grown tomatoes and the tomatoes have these bumps. They look like they're just a a um, bunch of tumors put together. They're really good tomatoes, but it's because of um, the temperature not being right uh, when they were growing and, and setting their fruit. So just uh, remember these when you're starting your seeds. And then the set plants in the garden on a cloudy day or late in the day. We generally try to uh, look for a cloudy day or um, late, about four to six o'clock at and in the evening, or even up to seven o'clock to plant them. And so that they are in the ground overnight and they start that process of uh, connecting their seeds to the soil and, and growing. Uh, if you plant them on a, a cloudy day or late in the afternoon. And extremely large plants are more likely to suffer transplant shock. So if you see these tomato plants or to, uh, pepper plants that they're selling and I said they look beautiful and have a few peppers on them said oh I can get a head start it's better to get one that has no uh, um, blooms or fruit on them and you'll probably have a better um, harvest yeah. overall one of the things I got this milk carton out <clears throat> earlier when we were, we were talking about uh, a couple slides back what you can do with these to help protect some of your seedlings once you get them out in the garden, but check the weather. And if it's gonna get kind of cool out, what you do is just cut the bottom part of this off and set this over the plant, you know, push it down into the soil and it will protect it from some of the cold weather that you may wind up having overnight and stuff like that. You can also use this as a terrarium, you know, and one of the things I wanted to share with you for seed starting that I started um, in 2019, my scotch bonnet, I wanted to make sure my, I wanted to grow a plant. Uh, and I started it and it took 21 days for the first two little leaves to pop up. I started them, but I read about a a system of starting plants that really does a seed starting that works well if you want to do just four or five uh, seeds of, of something that you're going to put in another one. This, I have a pot here and it has another pot inside, but in the bottom of it, I have um, little rocks I bought at Lowe's and I feel about uh, an inch to um, an inch and a half of the pebbles in the bottom. And then I put the inner uh, pot filled with my planting medium, plant my seeds here, water it, and I put it in the, the um, my breakfast room window. And it, it, it really has grown and has worked really well. So it's just something really quick if you want to grow a few. And it's just one, I put um, the, the, the little rocks in the bottom, I have in the big one, 
the other one down in the rocks, this one in it. And then I pour the water in around in, in the bottom. I water it the first time with um, just watering once I uh, put the seeds in to germinate. But from that point on, I keep water around, I pour the water around the edge so that the, the inner pot absorbs the water and, and it keeps it moist. And it's a really nice way to seed start when you have just little space. So with that, I will stop there and we can, do we have any uh, questions from? Yes, Joan, thank you so much. You, you stopped right there, it's, it's at a great point. I was just responding to someone who asked, um, I don't know, I didn't realize that you have to fertilize or you know, that you should fertilize seedlings. What do you use? And I started talking about the fact that some vegetables like tomatoes have usually a certain, um, that formula, what is it, nitrogen? Um, um, NPK. Uh, NPK, thank you. Uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And potassium. And so, and please, and, and you continue and just to share the importance of fertilizing. Well, one of the things with the uh, potassium is more for beets, the root type vegetables, uh, beets, onions, carrots, uh, your tomatoes, peppers, things of that nature use more nitrogen. Now, beans and your legumes <clears throat> will transfix uh, nitrogen into the soil so you know they they call them the three sisters it's corn peas and what's the other one i think squash or something that people plant together and they get the nutrients that one gives off the other two take out but uh the water so when you start your seed starting Water soluble fertilizers are some of the ones that sh you should get. I also use a, um, it's called Sea Magic. It's a water soluble fertilizer. It's organic, it's made from seaweed. And I get a small four ounce packet of it, put in a gallon of water, mix it. And then when I get ready to use it, I take a third cup and two gallons of water and put that on my plants. Uh, we were talking a little bit earlier about um, rotating your crops, with, especially if you're, you're doing raised beds. Always make a garden plant, and I didn't bring, bring mine from upstairs with me. I didn't prepare well for this. I'll do better next time. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. Go ahead. Do a garden plan and what like what we've done in the past, we map out what we're going to plant and on a sheet of paper, we put where that particular item is. The benefit of that is so that when it starts to grow, all the leaves are going to look the same if you're not real familiar with the crops that you're growing. This will tell you what's in that particular space. And especially if you're doing seed starting, because you know the plants may get, after they germinate, may be this size. And if you don't remember what you put in that particular slot, you don't know what you're gonna wind up planting once you get it out into the field. <laughs> Before it's over, I'll, I'll, I'll have to, I will run upstairs and get you some of this information. The mm -hmm. other thing, um, after you saved seeds and you're not familiar whether they're going to be viable or not, you can take them, two pieces of uh, paper, napkins, or paper cloth, or toweling, put the seeds in the uh, paper, cover it with another sheet, and put water over it. And in two or three days, they'll either germinate or they won't. Like for some, uh, Lagoons, some of the hardcore beans that you do have real hard coatings on them. Soak those, and especially okra, soak them overnight 
for at least three hours. The ones that sink to the bottom are the ones you use. They have more starch within the seeds and they're more viable. If they just float to the top, they're no good. And the other thing you can do with those is you can use some, um, uh, a, um, a file that uh, just use your seeds and just use the file or sandpaper on those hard seeds and that can help them uh, get ready to, to germinate. So. Um, thank you, Joan, and thank you, Byers. And I have one other question. Okay. Um, um, uh, um, someone said, I have never used compost, but now saving coffee grounds, eggshells, and peels from oranges and lemons. Um, she says, can you discuss a good compost and do we need, um, and do we need it for seedlings? That's a whole nother story. <laughs> uh, because in composting, you really have to do, it's, it's a science. Uh -huh. And um, you really have to look at what are the browns you put in your compost and what are, are the greens that you put in there? And then um, what um, what I can do is send, um, we have a, a nice um, PowerPoint similar to this that I can send just, just on the science of composting because I don't compost because I, well, I don't have a space. I have plenty space but I have trees, so I can't grow anything in my backyard. And um, so, but it's it's a matter of making sure you put the things that are appropriate in your compost pile and uh, the pile is large enough, it gets hot enough, and um, but it's well worth the effort. Thank you, Joan. Um, um, and, and as you said, compost is a whole can of worms. Someone asked, you know, does compost go, go bad? I don't know if the presentation that you're sharing with me, um, if it talks about that a little bit. Um, didn't really know that. Thank you. So, all oh, right. So, and then someone said, thank you. So you don't really, you don't really need to compost. I, I you know, that she likes that. You well, you, 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 you can compost or you can you can buy other kinds of fertilizers. I know here, our police department has a, um, a, a barn on a, um, an area in the one uh, part of, of the county where they the horses that they use in police service, yeah. they have um, manure that you can add to, your, to amend your soil. But uh, something that was mentioned earlier, one of the most important things is do soil testing. And uh, your extension service can provide the information of, of where to get the little containers and how to do it. Um, it's pretty easy. Usually costs about $15, $20 to get it a, a soil test of where you're going to grow. And if it's you're just doing containers, you don't necessarily need to do it, but your containers need to be clean and that kind of thing. And, and if I you have, uh, uh, like the person that showed the, um, plant earlier, every state has a pest plant um, center that can help you identify any, pretty much any plant you have. Um, and all you have to do is send them what you can, you actually can take a photograph of them. If you get a close up photograph, email it to them and their scientists will identify it for you. That is correct. And Prince William County, I'm in Prince William County. Others on this call are in Fairfax and Montgomery, I think, County uh -huh. in Maryland. But each one has a, an extension service. But so what I will do is sometime today is to um, to put into our um, group, our uh, Share What You Know group, um, the, uh, the links to those various uh, extension services. And they provide the soil testing that Joan mentioned, um, as well as testing your plant. Or if you have a tree in your yard, you're like, I have no idea what this tree or bush is. Um, you know, they will help you identify it. Often they ask that you send more than like a leaf to them, you know, to send them like uh, several leaves from this part of the tree and, and several leaves from another part of the tree. Um, you know, especially if there's, if there's any disease. So they'll, you know. Yeah, and, and to give you an example, I thought I had last year, my cabbage, I, I thought it was um, some horrible disease. I, one day, everything looked just perfect, like a, a photograph in a book. And I went back 
the next morning and they were all blistered and worn out. And I, I just pulled up the whole plant, put it in a little Kroger bag and took it to the uh, center and had them analyze it. And they told, I thought I had a disease that um, uh, was going to be a problem. Um, and um, they said, when I took it, they did send it back and said, you need to put up, pull up all of your cabbage plants because this will take over the, I had just one little row, but um, that was the case. But I had another one where I took something that had leaves that were scalded and looked like uh, some disease and they were wiltering, but it turned out it was the heat and the humidity from hot Nashville. So, <laughs> but uh, use, use the resources that are there. And uh, when you're starting your uh, seeds, uh, you can always call Janine or you can call me or buyers. We love gardening so much, we're addicted. So all you have to do is just call us and show us something and we'll we'll try to help find an answer to it. That's it, thank you, Joan. I don't know how many other slides, let me start. We're stop. done. With oh, the oh my goodness, okay, so it's nine after 11. <laughs> And um, Joan, this is wonderful. And buyers, you guys are, are awesome. Um, I had a question, um, uh, the seedling plant. I think it, oh, Joan, please to share that. And then I remember that Rajani had a plant with her and she wanted to share. So maybe we can, you know, you can help her right now. I yeah, don't know. Okay. But, but, but please take, please, take, a take, take a photograph and, and find your um, plant what it's called, it's the Soil Plant Test Center is what they're called in most states. And, and I, 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 the extension service. And they're part, of, they're part of the extension service. Right, and just so you so, know, extension services are usually supported and funded by um, a, a university. USDA. Or USDA. Right. They're, they're part of the, universe, the uh, US Department of Agriculture and they uh, are operated out of the land grant institutions that started in 1862, I think. And there, uh, th that allowed uh, universities to teach people about uh, agriculture and, and industries. Um, and then they had a second legislation in 1890s that most of the historically black colleges and universities that are land gain institutions uh, were a part of that funding like in Virginia, it's Virginia State University, and the other land grant is, uh, is Virginia Tech. You, and Joan, and listen, here's your, you're creeping into my territory. Going, <laughs> share with, <laughs> you, you and buyers are just a wealth of knowledge, and I've received so many great compliments in the, uh, oh, another one, Joan, uh, thank you, Joan and buyers, exclamation point. Um, and uh, you all just share such great uh, uh, knowledge and insights and it's amazing, no matter what we talk about, you're able to either to provide, um, you know, um, additional uh, a resource or you have the answer yourself. Um, so I want to say- Janine, uh, can I ask really quickly? I'm sorry. Yeah. I, know, yeah, I, know, oh, I know that I can take this and take pictures. I, I'm now understanding that I'm, I'm mostly seeing right now the, the seed plant or the seed leaves and not the actual right you know, I, I think even just google searching i might be able to figure it out without sending it whichever the case um but now that it's like this I, i'm trying to remember from the pre presentation you just did joan like where do i go from here with this i mean I, like ann said i didn't realize you're supposed to fertilize seeds and seedlings so it sounds like i need to fertilize this guy but he's also going to start getting too big for this little cup well, you need to put it, right? transplant it into a larger, one of the things that kills a lot of plants, I just killed two uh, about a month ago, um, that um, they have to have space for their root. It's just like if we are in a small space and we need to reach our arms out, the roots need space. And if you take your fingers and have your fingers where they can absorb the moisture and, and the plant can, it, it can grow. So you want to have enough space, a large enough pot. And when they get uh, root bound in small pots, they, they just can't thrive. 
so you, you if it's a if it's getting too big for the, what you have it in, you want to just uh, get a larger container, and um, just regular potting soil should be fine. One of the things that I talked about earlier is, and we didn't really get into it, uh, for crop rotation and for your garden, you have to plan it out. What I do and what I show people how to do, and this is, you really can't see it that well here, but this is a list of the vegetables that we like to eat. He okay. likes to eat all of them. <laughs> yeah, you, you make a list of what you like to eat you put it down, and then when you start to do your seed starting, it's real, like I said earlier, it's really important. What I have here is just a diagram of uh, one of my seed starting implements, which is basically an arrow garden. But again, each one of these circles has a number in it. I think you can see that a little bit better. No, not quite, <laughs> not quite. Okay, and it corresponds to what I have on this list, you know, with numbers. That way I know what I have growing and what's coming up. The other thing I was telling you about is once you start to plant your, um, your vegetables, mark off in the spot where you're going to actually have and what you're going to put in that particular spot. So that as they grow, you know what you've got there. This also helps when you're doing your companion planting. And like I said, I didn't prepare well for this. We've had a bit of a rough week. We had a couple of deaths in the family, but I'll get this information. I'll just get copies of this to Janine and she can distribute them to you. The other thing that you can do with seed starting and seed saving, you can use water bottles that you have and just make sure they're dried out, take, put your seeds in them, then store them in a cool, dry space away from the sunlight. And one final thing I would like to, to, to leave everyone with, well, a couple of things. I am so glad to see Anne and Rosby and Janine. It's like, oh gosh, this is so good. Uh, Happy days. <laughs> and But there, there are a couple of, oh, for uh, starting seeds, if you like squash, or if you like zucchini particularly, uh, for anyone who would like to grow and have enough space for something that you could grow in a bushel basket is an eight ball squash. You can find seeds pretty much for it. Uh, it grows pretty quickly and produces quickly, but it makes, it's a type of zucchini, but it, um, makes a wonderful plant and just it's almost like a novelty it's um because they're just unbelievable they grow so fast and they produce so many of these um these uh squash that are i'm trying to say about the size of a grapefruit oh so it's called eight ball and then you can um then you can there, there are recipes for where you can stuff them and bake them and all kinds of things, but it's a wonderful plant. We tried it about uh, three or four years ago, and it is just one of my favorite plants to grow. It's called uh, eight ball squash, and it's a zucchini. It's a type of zucchini. I'm going to drop a really quick link into the chat for everyone, um, just so you'll have it. Let's see, eight ball. Um, and, and, and please, if I think we may it's 11 16. I know a lot of people may have to uh, and, log and we'll need to we'll need to move on too but I That's wanted I to thought. just say it was it's really been our pleasure to share with you and and hear from everyone and we're all eager to to really get out and do some gardening uh, and, and so yeah a ball Joan and so are we um I just can't thank you and buyers enough I obviously have a lot of work to do because I'm going to forward what I said I would forward to you. I'm taking a copy of this chat, so I will make that available as I'm well. Great. Saving that now, I will uh, send this uh, after I, I'm going to edit out the very first part of our of the session because Joan and I jumped on earlier, so I need to do a little editing. 
but not not a lot and to forward the presentation once Joan has a chance to send that to me. Um, so please give us a few days just to make sure that we get, you know, we're able to gather that and get it to you. And I'm going to put it in the share what I know group. And Karen, I think you're still here. I'm Joan, can you stop sharing your screen? I know we're wrapping up. And um, I'm going to, um, uh, Karen, I'm going to invite you if you're still there to the share uh, what we know, share what you know. Uh, garden. Please do. Oh, you're there. I couldn't yeah. see you at the time. Thank you. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time. And as Joan said, they also have to move on. We're moving on with our weekend, right? So mm -hmm. thank you all for your time, for your energy, for just your heart. And we're going to keep growing no matter what level we are. It doesn't matter. We still have something to share with others. Um, and then we keep growing. The more we share, that's the more, this is what I believe. The more we share, the more we continue to grow. Thank so, you, Janine. Uh, thank you. Wonderful host. Thank you. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, John. Yeah, let me be before you go, let me um give you my email address. Okay. Well, she can put it in her she can put it in her information. Okay. Okay, can, I, I'm making a note. And John yeah, put it in there. So if you have questions or anything, let us know. Okay, Joan, you too, or just yeah, my email, and we'll we'll give you my email and my cell number, so I'm I'm available all the time. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. When I'm not she when means I'm not mm. ah, she bye means bye bye all. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Myers, and, and thanks everybody for attending. I know, Janine, this was great. It was. We're gonna do it again. So we will. We will. All right. Namaste. All right.